you guys thanks for coming out. Covering our uh, signing day here, early signing day in December. Um, Coach, why don't you just kind of maybe start off, just talk about your overall thoughts of uh, the recruiting class. Well, um, first of all, thanks for coming out. Um, I'd also like to thank all the people that have, you know, make our recruiting weekends and our recruiting uh, um, operation, I guess, possible. We have a lot of support staff people, our academic support, our, our professors and administrators that help on weekends. It's all, always important, the opportunity to sell our, our program and university. Um, you know, the recruiting process continues to speed up in college football and, and for the first time in, in college football history at early signing day. Um, as we kind of went through things and, and as things evolved through the, um, you know, through summers and summer camps and unofficial visits and a lot of things, I think it led to this day and the first time that this decision has been made. And we we're able to uh, capitalize on that and, and sign 14 players today, um, seven of which will will enter school here next semester, which is uh, extremely important to us and continued development of our players. Um, four of those players um, were high school graduates a year ago. Actually, five of them were. One, one attended prep school. Four um, had agreed a year ago to become uh, what we call a gray shirt where they delay enrollment. So um, to have that extra time and then for development and get them in spring practice will be extremely important to us, as well as adding uh, two junior college defensive tackles uh, to, to help in that area is something that we uh, – we had targeted to to help our program. So, um, and then again, I think probably uh, equally important in this class is the opportunity that I think in in our short time yet here that we had our our most success recruiting Western New York. We thought it was an outstanding year of prospects, and uh, we're excited that we're we were able to keep uh, some Buffalo natives and and guys that have played their high school football in this area home to play, as well as. Uh, uh, other players from from Western New York. So, um, with that, I guess I'll open up to any questions. Just to start off, I mean, with the with the local guys, mm -hmm. the first Matt Myers, obviously the quarterback. Everybody kind of knows who he is, um, and then Dylan McDuffie, and then Ben Cole, if you will. Yeah, you know, I guess you know, you know, no particular order. I guess just by how you asked it, you're extremely excited to to add all three of those those uh, young men that you talked about. Matt Myers, what what an outstanding young man. Um, you know, he you know went through a, a very, I guess, emotional time for a stressful time for for a young man as as we were going through our camps and and, and the decision to to leave Bishop Timon and then return to West Seneca, uh, West Seneca West to to play his high school football. Not sure what he was going to do, uh, and then then to have the season that he had in, in leading his team to a state championship is. Uh, you know, everything and then some of what we thought we were going to get. We had Matt and Cap a couple years ago, extremely impressed. Andy Cole, Nicky was coaching quarterbacks at that time, recruits that area for us. Jim Zabrowski now on staff coaching quarterbacks, also fell in love with, with Matt and as well as his abilities. And to be able to get that commitment during the summer was extremely important to us. We were going taking one quarterback and, and to keep it uh, local, I think, is uh, – is huge for our program. It's huge for this community as we continue to want want to build it with players from this area. And and I hope uh, uh, you know people here in Western New York take a, take the opportunity to watch this young man play because we think he's going to be special. Dylan McDuffie, another young man, changed high schools late in his career uh, from St. Francis to Sweet Home. Uh, you know, a very talented running back um, gives us a little bit more of a bigger back um, to to add to that running back core. Um, you know, two-way player in high school, showed a lot of ability both ways. But, again, his skills as a running back is something that's going to add to our program. Um, and uh, you mentioned Cole Bernison is one of the young men that uh, – Canisius grad who uh, accepted a gray shirt opportunity, a very versatile football player, played a lot of different positions. Um, we're going to use him in our kind of tight, tight end, H-back type position to start. Um, the more we talked about Cole a year ago and we kept watching his film – we just could – we need guys like this in our football program. He can play so many different spots. We look for him to be a guy that's going to be a major contributor in different ways in special teams, great attitude, great work ethic, and, and to get him what we thought was a huge bonus. I mean, a guy that 
great arm, but also can beat you with his legs. I mean, kind of like a little bit like Tyree, you know, as big. But, I mean, does, that, yeah. does he kind of fit that bill, what a quarterback you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, you know, we, we want to try to continue. Now, as the season went on, you know, we, we limited our quarterback run game. But, you know, you watch players that, you know, in today's college football, you need your quarterback that's going to be able to, to create some things with their legs at time, whether it be by design runs, whether it be in run-pass option schemes, all those things. But, uh, you know, he's a big physical uh, quarterback with an outstanding arm who runs well. And, and you're right, and that that's going to make it, uh, uh, again, exciting for our offense to put together a plan to use all those abilities. And, uh, I mean, you talk about the, the, the achievement to get as many local guys. I mean, it's, what, like your third year of uh, recruiting a class now together. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty once you get them out on the field and what they do for your team. But, I mean, would just looking in, do you think maybe this is your best class Bringing in, yeah, uh, you know, you never know. I, I try not to put pressure on guys that way, but I say the best we've done in Western New York and in the state, absolutely. Um, uh, and by that is a couple things. I think one, again, as we've continued to evolve and as a staff and as a program, um, we've understood, uh, you know, what it's going to take in, in, in the MAC conference and, and what it's going to take in the East Division, but also our, our understanding of, you know, what's available to us here in state but we we felt and there's some guys that as you know that that signed at other schools or power five schools that are going to be very good uh very good football players but yes the understanding and through our summer camps and and evaluations in person and other things that are happening um you know it's uh it's exciting and as we continue to to evaluate players not just athletically whether it be local or not but also everything else that they bring, whether it be character, their academics. Uh, you know, uh, we have an outstanding education here, and, and everyone uh, you know, has the opportunity and making sure that everybody's going to be admissible by our university standards. Everything, NCAA qualifiers, all those things are important in this. And then especially with the early signing period, you have to take into account of these things um, before you officially get, get all the signatures. So that being said, uh, we're excited because of – a, you know, we thought we finished the season, you know, strongly. We have construction on, on facilities. We've made improvements. And we hope all those things are going to keep our, our local players, um, you know, interested to give a good, thorough look to see what we're all about. And hopefully that leads to more. With the early signing period in general, uh, did that change, not necessarily, I guess, the, the recruiting process at all in terms of how you kind of approach things to kind of, you know, Get guys to, to, to get a good look at Buffalo and say, hey, you know, you know, sign in December and you know, we'll we'll, we'll take care of things. Down the road. Yeah, I think it has changed. I think uh, you know, we've kind of watched throughout the day. Um, you know, the staff is was in the office today by a little after six, um, and as as signatures started to come in after seven, um, we're watching things uh, nationally right now and trying to take a look. I think there's a lot of programs right now that everybody's going to kind of study where everybody's at and how much of each class or available scholarships have been signed and and really where does everyone go from here because um, you know and how much more how many more signees will be in February and I I think we'll all learn and grow from this I think from from our standpoint um, it helped a little bit in, in the acceleration I think again I go back to the camp setups and the the work that our coaches put in in the month of June traveling our recruiting areas to get in-person camp evaluations has helped us um, all the things that we've been able to do some of these local players had the opportunity to be on campus multiple times they get to know us they feel more comfortable but all those things have helped us get more commitments early the nice thing i think for a lot of schools and schools like us in a i guess a group of five type of setting that um, you know uh, financially you have to be uh, you know, um, wise in what you're doing. I think what happened with a lot of these guys today is that you've been able to lock them up. Guys that have been, they're signed, it's official, and we're not going to spend three more trips to their high school and to into their homes just to say, is everything okay? Do you have any questions? And again, and, and really lots of money gets spent around the country doing that. And I hope today, whether this is the way it stays or, or it moves to another time, hopefully some of that is going to be looked at on it as, as we go through. Um, I think another benefit for a school like us is, you know, two years ago, guys, we, we lost five players in the last seven days. 
to Power Five schools, and and three of those guys were committed as early as the summer, and we stopped recruiting, thinking we have a solid commitment, um, and and then in the in you know eleventh hour, you're you're left kind of trying to figure things out. So I think some of the things for schools like us where you might get poached late. Um, this, this has a chance if you're going to commit, you're going to sign a guy, and you're going to move on. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be looked at and scrutinized through this early signing period. But, uh, you know, I think for today, I think it, it's definitely a, a plus for us. Real quick, Coach. <clears throat> Talk about earlier about facilities. How much of a benefit is it to have shovels in the ground on the outside of your stadium with a new field house? You talk, over the years, you've talked about a potential of a field house. Yeah. Now you have a field house. Uh, how much did that help with recruiting? Extremely important. You know, you, you talk about how many, how many classes now that we've been able to recruit. Excuse me. And, um, you know, you, you, you talk about wishes and hopes and plans, um, you know, when we first get here. And, and now you see new building, you know, new facilities, and now you see earth moving on the other end. People asked, uh, even in the fall, about uh, the groundbreaking and how our current players felt. Well, about half that group, quite honestly, know that they may not practice in it. So, you know, th that part was, you know, kind of tough for them. It's kind of mixed. They're happy for the program, but it's not going to really benefit them fully. Now you have a chance to, to see – you know, young men who are in high school that are seeing it, and it is helping because those, those have been questions. And honestly, uh, you know, we've lost out on players because, uh, you know, because where we were at in facilities, and people have questioned that even as either as late as last summer if we were going to get some of these things done. So to see that is is a great benefit. I can't thank Alan Green and uh, President Tripathi enough for for you know what they've been able to do to get us in in that situation. I know it's your third class. Maybe it's a little different at Wisconsin and Whitewater, but just being at the D1 ranks now, how have you kind of seen the recruiting landscape change, so to speak, with guys you know being poached at the last minute and then now having this early signing period? How much have you kind of learned and had to adjust your recruiting strategy based on you know the the, the changes, so to speak? And well, everything it, it is a little bit more of a filter down system, I think. With that, I think today my, my you know we'll see. I guess as everybody looks at it, how that changes. I think from some of my past experiences, as you alluded to, um, sometimes you have to wait for some of that to to kind of happen. I think today will help all levels of football, to be quite honest, because there's X amount of players no longer uh, available. So when at whatever level of, of, of college football goes out looking for players in January, I think they know which ones are, are, are not going to be able, uh, able to be signed. So that is, but I think, Nick, the other thing is, even in the short time we've been here, um, I think recruiting has changed. And, and, of course, the signing day is one. The commitments get earlier and earlier. They have changed the camp formats on how you can do it. So there's a lot of things that keep evolving, and I think just like everything, you have to stay on top of it. And Rob Ionello does a great job as our recruiting coordinator and as we continue to adapt. But our ability to to um, you know get to these camps in the summer, see people in person, get our eyes on them, get people to campus, all those things are important for all college football programs, and uh, and it'll continue to be. Uh, Coach, it seemed like the offensive and defensive line was a priority in this class. You yeah, signed three of each, three. Of yeah, the you know, priorities. you know, as as things have happened and. You know, from, from our arrival, I think one of the things that we wanted to continue to improve on um, was our overall speed and athleticism, our ability to create plays. I, I think, uh, you know, this season we we're able to try to, you know, see some of the, the fruits of that labor of where we're at athletically on the perimeter. Um, but with that, I think uh, there were some times where we neglected and, and kind of maybe held back, uh, you know, we're, we're maybe one short in how we break down our, our, our counts, excuse me, on at position. So we're a little deficient in our numbers, so we wanted to make sure that we address that and address that, uh, um, you know, quickly this year. So um, we did want to get uh, – uh, a large group of offensive linemen. I, I think our line has been able to develop, and now we're going to have the, uh, another group of young guys that will come in and, and get a chance to, to work under some experienced players, hit the weight room, and do some good things. Same thing, uh, we, we needed some help, and we've had some injuries in the defensive line. And uh, so by, by signing two junior college players, um, it was very important to us for to have some guys who are going to add depth immediately. And then getting uh, Eddie Wilson from Milford Academy 
um, we think is a huge plus because he's in prep school, but now he has a chance to enroll, and he'll be in spring practice as well to be able to compete. Malcolm Kuntz was also from there last year. Malcolm came in and played last year as a true freshman. So um, those are, are you know areas that we feel that, that we needed to create more competition, and we will. One last question for me. Uh, you signed a guy from Hawaii. It might be our first ever. Uh, how do you uh, how well, do you recruit a player from Hawaii? Well, we got D- Daryl Lake Pulsa is uh, is is uh, from from the islands himself, so he kind of he really helped with that, and 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 Atu's family that came in, but uh, um, you know Atu was uh, a young man from San Antonio from Mount Mount San Antonio Junior College. Um, you know, he's about a 275-pound defensive tackle, um, good pass rusher, um, you know, an outstanding young man, great, very humble, hardworking guy. Um, the interesting thing was he, he was messaging us a little after 7 a.m. here uh, this morning. So you know what time it was out there, and I, you know, and he, he said he couldn't sleep. He was so excited about, the, about it, but uh, he's got uh, a great work ethic, an outstanding family, and... Uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's a chance uh, that the, the only thing bad thing about her, John, was I didn't get a chance to take a home visit out there. So it was, but uh, but uh, we're excited for him to get here in January. I guess if I could, guys, uh, you know, I, if I'd be, I don't know how much it'd go through, but Corey Gross, I, I know we didn't really talk about Corey from Brockport. He lives in Rochester. He's an out, you know, very versatile player. Um, you know, for his high school, played running back, played some linebacker, played some defensive end, as well as defensive back, a very physical safety that, that we're excited about. Mike Navinsky was a tight end uh, at Victor. He's a guy who uh, we feel is going to have a chance to – he's a big man who's going to grow into a uh, an athletic uh, offensive lineman. And, uh, you know, he's another one that uh, – we're, we're extremely excited about. I didn't talk about the Patterson brothers either. Uh, Jarrett and James, uh, same high school as, as Justin Mulba. And uh, uh, former UB player Justin Winters used to coach there as well. And to get those two players, again, are going to help us. Dan Fedor um, from Elmira is another, another young man that, you know, from right here in New York. Again, a, another big, tall, six, 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 seven body that, that has a huge, huge upside again. And again, to be able to get those guys from in-state have been, been a huge plus. Let me, let me, I was going to follow up with that. The, the guys from like the Rochester, I mean, if you look at big picture, you essentially have five guys quote unquote from the area. I mean, how, yep. I mean, that's gotta be huge, especially for you in this program to be able to get, you know, five guys who, you know, who know, you be and what what they're about. It is, and and it, and I think it helps in so many different ways, Nick. Uh, you know, to be able to for those players, like I said, to get here and they, you know, and to to come to our games, to come to spring practice and do those things, and then their their fellow teammates are going to have an interest in our program. Their communities have a have an interest in our program. All those things are going to help. I think our again through time and and just like anything in life, you you have to work at building relationships and and you have to in our in the understanding of what we're doing and how we're doing it. I think we we've continued to build solid relationships with high school coaches that are feeling more and more comfortable and seeing seeing what we're doing and 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 that's what we want it to be. And if, if this roster can be filled. With, with guys from this state, uh, we, we, wouldn't, we could be uh, nothing more than excited about that. With a kid from Hawaii, you told him to, to buy a big coat, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember how many weeks ago he was here, but uh, he did see it, and, and it was, you know, it made, and his mother was here as well, and, and she gave the blessing, and that was, uh, uh, you know, a huge part of it. But, um, you know, as you kind of allude to whether it be weather or um, – you know, whatever it may be about, about our community, as, as we always have to kind of talk about, I, I think the thing that really um, shown itself each and every weekend is much the way this community is, is the way people viewed our staff. And, you know, being a, a community of, of good neighbors and, and, the, uh, and the genuineness of what this community is about, people that come and visit have been able to see that, whether it be with our athletic administration, our coaching staff, people when we go out to restaurants and it really makes families and parents feel comfortable about sending their 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 sons here to play and get their education anything else guys all right thanks guys really appreciate it